But I'm not even interested in why Golovkin's banned indefinitely by New York State Athletic Commission. Uh, I'm not even bothered. As far as I'm concerned, the guy's a fraud. Yeah, he can fight, but he's been carefully matched by Tom Loeffler, hasn't he? <clears throat> We're talking about a guy here who's got a massive profile and he's earning millions of dollars, but yet he's only beat five world champions. Only. And he's not loyal as well. I only want to have loyal people ar around me. And f well, he's not even around me, is he? But I only want to show an interest with people that are loyal. I have a big thing about loyalty, right? And I mean loyalty as regards fighters, I mean. I'm not going to say, oh, 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 I direct message, but I've just been direct messaging somebody today who works in boxing industry in, in the last couple of days, and... You know, a lot of people get a lot of stick in boxing, especially uh, promoters. And even promoters have argued stick with, but let me tell you this, there's no loyalty. There's no loyalty. 90% of, of boxers would sell their own grandma. So, do you know what I mean? But it is what it is, isn't it? So... It is what it is, but uh, yeah, he's uh, he's been banned, Dale. It says on if you go on to box rec, it says Gennady Golovkin suspended by New York State Athletic Commission indefinitely. So I don't know what that's about, but who cares anyway? He's only beat five world champions, so Rico will know. Rico, my pal, will know. So, but anyway, what what can you do? It's one of them things, isn't it? Uh, I just, I mean, get a giggle off, King, pushing 38. To, to wrap it up in a nutshell, he's pushing 38. To me, he looks a shadow of his former self. So we ask ourselves, was Triple G a myth? I say... No, he wasn't a myth. He was just in a poor era. And when all said and done, a case can be made for Kell Brook to be in his top five wins. Because he beat five world champions and one of them were Kell Brook. Along with Derevchenko last week and Lemieux. And you could say Derevchenko and Jacobs. Question marks against them two wins. I mean, to finish off, this is how I'm going to finish off, right? Golovkin in his last six fights could have gone two, three, and one, right? The king of hype. But when you go through Golovkin's wins, right, over world champions, Derivanchenko thought he got beat, right? Jacobs thought he got beat. Kelbrook, a welterweight. Lemieux, he knocked him out, but he were no great shakes. Gill, Daniel Gill, he knocked him out, but he were no great shakes. Do you, do you see where I'm coming from? But Derry Venchenko's not even a world champion, so, you know, so he can't even be in the five, can he really? Do you know what I mean? A good fighter, but Jacobs... Golovkin got beat against Jacobs. I thought it was Venchenko beating, but if you go through the five world champions, he's beat Jacobs, right? I thought Jacobs beat him. Kell Brooker welterweight. Lemieux, we beat Lemieux. I'll give him Lemieux when he beat Gill. But they never had belts at the time. They never had belts. They'd been beaten a couple of times each. He got them at the right time. And then the other, the other, the other guy. Uh, Kasim Omer, he was a light middleweight, so he's beaten a light middleweight, knocked him out. Kell Brook, a welterweight, he's beat him. Jacobs, he beat him, but I thought he lost. You know, it's Lemieux and, and Gill. do you know what I mean? His records... 
piss poor when you look at it. Five world champions being, I can't get it out of my head, and two of them were small guys. Do you know what I mean? So, New York State Athletic Commission standard procedure to suspend a fighter after a fight. And when they apply to fight again in that commission, they have to go through the standard health check process. It's standard stuff, nothing untoward gone on. Alright then. So, does that mean then that... Uh, Let's have a look at the bout. No, I'll not look at the bout. Go on to event, Porky. So, who's the other guy? Who's, uh... Well, let's have a look at somebody else who's just won. Well, no. Camille Serimita. He fought on that fight. Dale, I've just been looking at other people who won on that show. And they're not banned indefinitely. So how come Golovkin is? Ali Akhmedov, he won on that show. But he, he won on that show and he's not banned indefinitely. So Golov, uh, Ivan Berichek, he's not banned indefinitely. And he won. So everybody on the show won except Joseph Ward. So Israel Madrimov. So... He, he won, so alright. Hello? Hello? Uh, well, uh, well, parents at Goal is selling a uh, uh, Range Rover 12 play. So if you're interested. What? A, rain, a, rain, a Range Rover? Yeah? What? Is it manual yeah. or auto? Yeah. I don't know, it's silver. I'll speak to you in a bit. Jesus. Is it manual or auto? I don't know, it's silver. That's the right answer that, isn't it? And if it's so, I think it is. I think it's a discovery. So, that's what I'm up against. That is what I'm up against. Is it manual or is it auto? No, it's silver. Right, getting back to this. Uh, so, so, as far as I'm concerned, he's only one. So Dale, uh, sorry about that interruption, uh, some, some div wrong me, <laughs> I'll tell you when I see you. Uh, what, no, what, 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 uh, there's nobody else on that show banned indefinitely Dale, so I don't know mate, go check for yourself, alright mate. Uh, so as far as I'm concerned, Gennady, Gennady Golovkin, yeah, he's had a lot of hype, but look at his wins. I know that Rico and all my peers will agree with me on this because I've done my homework. So anyway, have a look at these snooker shots. What do you think to these? See, it's not all about hitting them hard, is it? You do them delicate shots. Yeah. All right, now it's Jake Ball, now to bottom. Right, Callum Smith. And Billy Joe Saunders, right? Are they going to fight? Well, let's have a look at let's have a look at their records now, now, and let's see if we can get get some statistics on here, right? And uh, and just have a look because this is how I look at it, right? At the moment, right? In boxing, at the moment, we're being Fight fighters are being kept apart, aren't they? And it, and it, and it's not good. It's not good. It's not good at all. Uh, it's not good at all. And I want to see. I want to see the best fight the best. Now, this is how I look at it. Right? This is how I look at it. Callum Smith is a six foot three and a half. 
giant of a man. He's like Thomas Ausfausen. He's a giant of a man. But he is also very careful. But he's also been very, very careful about who he fights. Now, Callum Smith, in my opinion, has beat who? Who has Callum Smith beat? When you go through his record, you look at it, you think 26 and 0, 19 KOs. You know, so seven of them, if he's not, he's not knocked out, has he? But the more you dig deeper, the more, the more you, you, you look at it and you think, do you know what? What's going on here? What are we being fed? What are we being fed? I'm not sure. But Callum Smith's right. We know, we know he's, he's won British. He's won English, British, Commonwealth, European. And he's won world title. You know, he's got a WBA belt, and the super belt actually, at super middleweight, and he's got a ring magazine belt, and he's got the Ali trophy, hasn't he? Good luck to him, but he waited it out, didn't he? He waited it out like Tyson Fury. Now, Callum Smith, he's another one of them breeder fighter where the banking millions, this kid here is worth a fortune. But he can actually fight just like Billy Joe Saunders. This is why I get so frustrated with, with boxers. Callum Smith can fight for fun. He can fight for fun. He can fight for fun, Callum Smith, let me tell you. No ifs, no buts. He can fight. He can fight. Alright? Callum Smith can fight for fun. But. Who is he fighting? Who is it? All these guys he's fighting. Now let's just have a look at his. Let's have a look at the get the world champions that he's beat. I always refer to this because this is a yardstick what I what I use to judge. Now, if you're working with British level kids, you're going to start judging people that are just below that. You're going to start judging people around about British level or they fought. Now. If you're working with world title kids, you're going to look at all the champions that have been. Because if you're a world champion, you're going to be wanting to fight world champions, aren't you? Or former world champions, or guys that are world level. For example, we've got Josh Whale, and I know that because I signed him for Dennis Hobson. Josh Whale. Josh Whale is a European level fighter, so. Moving forward, Josh will be fighting guys round about that level. Josh is going to be trying to climb the ladder to world level, isn't he? That's the end target. And he's good enough. It's just a case of the minefield of getting him there. This is why you have a manager and, and, and promoter and why you have good people around you. You have to be on the ball. Now, Callum Smith's got Joe Gallagher around him. Now, Joe Gallagher, I don't know him personally, but... Joe Gallagher likes money and he doesn't like his fighters to be in fights where they get beat. Now he proudly, he proudly tells everybody that he, he went well, 49 and 0 before he lost Joe. Joe Gallagher won 49 fights as a trainer on the trot or something like that. He's the Rocky Marciano of trainers. But who were he fighting? Now I'm going to show you now. The Callum Smith, the curious case of Callum Smith. Right, are you ready for this? I hope you're enjoying these snooker shots that we keep slotting in, by the way, as well. Right, watch this. Callum Smith going back to. Let's have a look. Let's have a look at his first. The first guy that he beat. Ooh. The first guy that Callum Smith beat who were any good really. Let's have a look. Well I'm not gonna count I'm not gonna count uh Sex Locker because 
even though he was 28 and two at the time, he's never beat a, he's never beat a world champion. He's what I call a C level class. He's C level. But Callum Smith has been ranked with the WBC, right, in the top ten since 2014. So I think he was top five actually from then. He's been in he's been ranked with the WBC since 2013, but I think he was top five, was he? From 14. Or, or was it top 36? It'd be interesting to find out. I know he was the longest reigning number one ranked WBC guy for a long time. It was a minefield how, how, how they how the navigated it. A bit like Anthony Joshua who were going to be mandatory for Wilder. They soon jumped to IBF. Now Callum, all that time with WBC paying all them sanctioning fees and when it come to it, what did they do? What did they do? They, 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 even, they went with WBA, didn't they? Groves route. They hadn't even fought the WBC guy, which is craziness. But the world champions, former, current and future that Callum Smith has beaten are as follows. Rocky Fielding, he knocked him out in round one for British super middleweight title and the WBC silver, he knocked him out in a round, right? Well done, well done Callum Smith. Rocky went on to, to win a WBA world title. Now, he got knocked out by Callum, right, in November 2015. But yet, he won a world title in 2018 July. He actually won it, won a world title before Callum won a world title. That was about that one. Eh? And he lost it in his first defence against Alvarez. Uh, Rocky Fielding suspended by New York State Athletic Commission indefinitely. I wonder why that is. That's going to get me puzzling now. All you hardcore fans, if you can find out that, get in touch with me because I'm snowed in at the moment. But that's it. So, so he can't fight unless he has to do a, do a, go through a medical or something. I don't know, but he's he's ranked number five in the world, Rocky Fielding. And he fights in Liverpool, 23rd of November, I bet it is. Oh no, Friday 15th. Why is Rocky Fielding red flagged? Why is Rocky Fielding red flagged here? What's that? What's happening here? Uh, M he's on an MTK global show promoted by Lee Eaton. Lee Eaton. But yeah, he's red flagged. I don't know. Dale, can you check out why Rocky Fielding's been red flagged? He's headlining a show on MTK on 15th of November at the Olympia in Liverpool. Two, four, six, eight, nine fights on it. Hey, there's a good show there. Rocky Fielding, Terry Flanagan, you got two former world champions there. Throw Natasha Jonas and Martin Murray into it, mate. That's a decent show, that, mate. Looks a good show. See if you can find out why he's been red flagged today. And get back to me while I'm filming. Just send it in a voice text or, or a normal text. All right, mate. So, I don't know, really, but getting back to Callum Smith, right? Basically, I'll fly through this bit here now, because... He's, he's, he's pretty boring, Callum Smith. He, do, he doesn't sell himself, but Callum Smith, he can fight for fun. Team GB, just missed out on Olympics. He's ranked number one by Boxwreck in the division, just same as Frotch was on Boxwreck. Uh, he's ranked number one in Britain, obviously, as well. He's got the WBA belt and he's got the Ring Magazine belt. I don't count the WBC Diamond belt. He's not the top guy at the WBC, uh, so, but he's fighting 
John Ryder next. Now, he's just beat Hassan and Dam. Right, that's his last win in June. Hassan and Dam is 35 years of age and he is a career middleweight. Uh, Hassan and Dam, the fight before uh, Callum Smith last Christmas, 22nd of December, he fought Martin Murray in Manchester. Uh, 160 pounds that is middleweight he went life and death with Martin Murray a mandatory decision against Martin Murray right Martin Murray mandatory decision yeah he steps up then eight pounds he moves north eight pound and fights Callum Smith obviously uh, Callum is a massive puncher uh, he's got a massive reach, 78 inch reach. That is unbelievable. It is the longest reach in boxing. Uh, he's got a 3 inch reach advantage on Carl Froch. And everybody said Carl Froch had the longest arms of any super middleweight. Well, Callum Smith just put that story to bed on it because. He has got the longest arms to ever fight as a super middleweight. In fact, in fact, let's just check something out here. Thomas Ausfausen. Let's see how long his arms are. Cause he were about he he were about as. Uh, so how do you spell that? Ausfausen. I don't, know, I don't know how you spell it. No, he's even got longer arms than him. So, Callum Smith has got the longest arms. Callum Smith's got the longest arms in super middleweight history. If anybody can find out who's got longer, let me know. Because he's got longer arms than... He's got even got longer arms than some... Uh, He's even got longer arms than some than, than some some heavyweights. I mean, 78 inch. I mean, Alvarez is not going to want to go near him, is he? Hey, 78 inch arms, long length. And John Ryder, oh my God, John Ryder's arms are 72 inch. So Callum Smith has got half a foot. Half of a foot. I mean, in boxing terms, that means that this fight against John Ryder is. Yeah, John Ryder's not got a prayer, has he? He's just going to get picked off. Callum's just going to stay behind the jab. Half a foot longer. No wonder Joe Gallagher took the fight. So, so Callum Smith, right? He's got wins over Rocky Field and he knocked him out. Rocky went on to win a world title, he beat Zuga. Probably the worst super middleweight champion ever. So well done, he beat him. Right, he's then fought Mohamedi, Reynoso, Nemi Sapetti, Blackledge, Scogland, Holtzkern, a kickboxer. George Groves, who was shot to death, never... Oh, George Grove was shot to death. I mean, he had 205 rounds in his career, which isn't a lot, but he'd had it. He'd had he'd had some hard fights, man. George Grove. I mean, look at George Grove didn't waste any camps, did he? I mean, he had some hard fights. I mean, up to fighting Carl Froch, he'd only really had his only hard fight with De Gale, on it. You could really give give De Gale nod for winning that one, but. Uh, Carl, I mean, Carl Froch, he had a, a nine rounds and an eight. He had 17 rounds there with Carl Froch, where he got miles on clock. Rebrass, that went 12 rounds. Uh, Badu Jack, that were a split decision. That were a war, 12 rounds. Martin Murray, 12 rounds. Gutnick, 12 rounds. 
He had a war with Chudin off, 12 rounds. No, not 12 rounds. He, he got him out of there quick, didn't he? Sorry, but Eubank, that was 12 rounds. Uh, and then he got beat by Callum Smith, and then he's retired. But he'll come back, George Goes. He's just waiting for the right opportunity. I bet he's going to come back at light heavyweight if he does. So it'll be interesting to see what happens, but... As regards George Groves being a massive puncher at world level, it proved that he wasn't, was it? When you step up to world level, you don't always stop people, do you? I mean, in George Groves' the world title fights, right, he's knocked out Jamie Cox, who should be a light middleweight, chudding off, uh, that's it, so... Jamie Cox and Chudinoff has stopped them. Who else has he stopped in world title fights? Nobody. Just Jamie Cox and Chudinoff. So George Groves, for all the millions he's made and for the profile he's got, he has only got two world title... No, he's got three world title wins, sorry, three. But only two were knockouts. So he's won three world title fights, but out of them three world title fights, Shooting off with a world champion. No, were it vacant that belt? Were it vacant? Let's have a look. Yeah, but he was a world champion. He beat Buglione, didn't he? Beat Buglione on points. But I like to see him come back. Him actually, I like Buglione. But Callum Smith, right? So he's beat Groves. He beat George Groves, hasn't he? And he's beat Rocky Fielding and he's beat Hassan and Dam. But there's a question mark against every single one of them, isn't there? Rocky Fielding, that was before he'd even won a world title. If you want to be nitpicking, Hassan and Dam is a career middleweight and he was approaching 36 years of age. And George Groves were injured, wasn't he? And they wouldn't let him drag it out any longer. So. They're Callum Smith's best three wins. And he's fighting John Ryder next. And they're bigging this fight up. But John Ryder's not being a world champion. Or, or unless you count into him as a world champion. But he's really a middleweight with short arms. The only good thing John Ryder's got going for him in this fight is that he's a southpaw. And that's it really. But other than that, I don't think... Callum Smith will be troubled. I see Callum Smith being navigated around uh, murky waters. I mean, this is how I look at it. Callum Smith's number one, isn't it, right? Why isn't he fighting David Benavitas? David Benavitas, why is he not fighting him? Why not? Hey, why aren't you fighting him? I don't know. Uh, I don't know. David Benavitas is somebody I'd like to see him fight. He's 22 and 0, 19 KOs, six foot one and a half. You know he's got the the biggest knockout ratio in the division. 19 knocked out out of 22. I don't see Callum Smith going near him. They didn't want to fight Anthony Durrell. He's a big puncher. Uh, so I don't know. But it is what it is, isn't it? Callum Smith, I don't see him fighting. Who's the other guy? There's another guy as well who's tasty at that, le that level. Uh, so you've got Callum Smith, Eubank Saunders, Ryder Fielding, Chudidoff Benny Vegas, Willie Monroe, and Caleb Plant. That's it, Caleb Plant. 19 and 0, 11 by KO, 27 years of age from. Uh, Nash Nashville, Tennessee, currently living in Nevada. Now he's the IBO world champion. He beat Us Katekigu and Mike Lee. Now, so I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I don't know what Callum Smith's playing at, but he is not fighting anybody who is top draw. I don't know. And then I look at... So Callum Smith's basically beat three, three guys, hasn't he? 
free will champions. Billy Joe Saunders, he has beat John Ryder. Billy Joe Saunders beat John Ryder six, over six years ago. And Callum Smith's fighting him next. I mean, so it's more recycled stuff from Eddie, isn't it? Uh, he's beat Chris Eubank five years ago, Billy Joe Saunders. Eubank's got an IBO belt. I don't see Saunders screaming for a Eubank fight. I don't see Eubank screaming for it. All I see is fighters fighting people, picking up millions of pounds, but not fighting each other. We could have a little round robin, couldn't we? I mean, look at this here. Callan Smith, Eubank Saunders, John Ryder. Rocky Fielding, that's five. You could throw somebody else into the mix. Anthony Sims Jr. Anthony Sims Jr., he's talking about fighting at super middleweight, isn't he? Uh, so, he's just won at the weekend. 20 wins. 18 by KO, 20 and 0, 18 by KO, 6 foot 1, he's a super middleweight now, uh, one, didn't he fight at, one tier light heavyweight, I'm not sure, but either way, Anthony Sims Jr, I'm sure he started, I'm sure he started out as a, uh, light heavyweight, I could be wrong, the casualness in me coming out there, yeah, he started off as a big man, he started off as a cruiserweight, so Eddie Hearn has now got him boiled down to super middle because it suits him, doesn't it? Eddie Hearn's probably seen something in Anthony Sims Jr. and he said, you know what? I'm a little bit light here in the super middleweight division. I'll boil him down. So they boiled Anthony Sims down. You could have a round robin there. You could have Smith, Eubank, Saunders, three, Ryder, four, fielding, five. Callum Plant, six. Truex. I mean, you could go on. You could easily put Sims in. You could get a little tournament there. And tournaments are the way forward. But Billy Joe Saunders, right? The curious case of Billy Joe Saunders. He's not a big puncher. But he's multi-skilled. But he's practised his skills against guys that... Is, he should be now when I look through his record here right I look through his record let's go back five year no let's go back six year it beat John Ryder unanimous decision they were close though 115 114 115 113 115 113 Southpaw against Southpaw see that's what happens when a Southpaw fights an Orthodox the orthodox guy can't get as much sparring in, so he fights the southpaw. They can't get the sparring because there ain't many southpaws, is there? So they always say, oh god, I don't want to fight him, man, he's a southpaw. It's a cliche. John Ryder perfected it against Billy Joe Saunders, but he has got the closest to beating Billy Joe Saunders. And the other guy, when Billy didn't train much for it, the guy when he had Ben Davidson in his corner, but let's back up to John Ryder six years. Since then, Billy Joe's fought Blanda Moura for vacant European. He, he knocked him out. He then fought Eubank. That was a split decision. So, yeah, that was probably closest. They were close fights, then Eubank and John Ryder. They were domestic then, though. British come off European around about that level. Uh, John Ryder fight with the British in Commonwealth. Then he's fought. Blow ya, 17 wins, 27 losses. 27 losses. Then for Andy Lee. You know, he beat Andy Lee, not he dropped Andy Lee a couple of times, didn't he? Uh, but that but the, Andy Lee to say he dropped him twice, he only beat him by a mandatory decision. So a close fight that. I mean if you're elite, you should be beating Andy Lee, a light middleweight. Then he fought that R2 Akavov and everybody said Billy got beat. That's the big question mark on Billy's career. 
they all said he got beat against him, they said he got beat against John Ryder, he got beat against Shubank, but he grinds out wins, Billy Joe Saunders, so I respect him for that. He grinds out wins. But he just pick his battles. Willie Monroe, that's the one where his son Stevie kicked Willie in the nuts. David Lemieux, tailor made for him, Billy took him to school. Charles Adamo, 40 odd year old. He shouldn't have been in the same ring as him, not with 13 losses. He retired him. Shefat Asufi. And now Marcelo Esteban Cosares. I mean, how are these guys even sliding into world title fights? It's unbelievable. So since John Ryder, six year and one month ago, we've had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten fights in six year from Billy Joe Saunders. So in six year, six, 73 months, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten fights in 73 months. So Billy Joe Saunders has fought every seven and a half months. It's not very active, that is it. But and that's if you that's when he fight that's that's when he fights. No, in fact it's longer, isn't it? Two. When he fights Cosseras, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That'll be his 10th fight in 6 year 2 months. When he fights Kosarev. In 6 year 2 months. So that's 74 months. 10 fights in 74 months. And yet we're not even got to November yet. There's time for Billy to pull out. But I don't know what to make of it. I did jot a few notes down here. I've put Callan Smith, Saunders. Has beat 3 good men in Eubank. Eubank Lemieux, Andy Lee, you could throw John Ryder in and say four good men. Smith's gone on a similar route beating, I've put three but you can say four. Uh, Groves, Rocky Fielding, Hassan and Dam and you could throw Rebrass into that. But he's an old man and Dam. Like Saunders he's been wrapped in cotton wool while collecting belts at all levels. Yeah, these guys, Saunders, right, he's got Joe Gallagher behind him and he. Callum, Saunders has, he's had Frank Warren behind him and now he's got Earn. They've been carefully matched, haven't they? Right? Carefully, carefully matched. Now, from domestic to world levels, they've done the clean sweep. I mean, when I went to see Jimmy, jo J uh, Jimmy Tibbs, I'm going to say Jimmy Joe Saunders then, when I went to see Jimmy Tibbs, he was saying the skill level of Billy Joe Saunders was unbelievable. I mean, we had a cup of tea and that, and he said that. His skills are sublime. Billy, uh, Jimmy Tibbs had nothing but praise for Billy Joe Saunders. And he said, people said he can't punch, but he can punch. But he doesn't really need to, does he? Because he takes him to school. So Billy can go and have tear-ups if he wants. If, if Jimmy Tibbs said Billy can punch, he can punch. But Jimmy says his skills are sublime, but he doesn't get hit. And I can, I can see where... Where Jimmy Tibbs is coming from there, Billy Joe Saunders has been taught the art of boxing, he doesn't get hit. Tyson Fury doesn't get hit, although now his skills are eroding, he got hit against Wallin, didn't he? He got badly cut. Now, maybe that might have frightened Tyson, who knows? I mean, who's to say Tyson's even going to fight again? But Smith has the WBA belt and the ring belt, Saunders has the WBO belt. And he's also a WBO champion at middleweight, so he's a two-weight king. So let's see unification, Eddie, for God's sake. Why are you not giving us this, Eddie? Why not? Why are you not giving us Saunders against Smith, Eddie? Your dad gave us Eubank Ben twice. Why are you not giving us Saunders against Callum Smith? Right, head down, approach the ball, no rush. Put some chalk on. Right, walk up to the table, there you go, head down, that's it, I know I don't get my head fully, I know I don't get my head fully down, but, go on, you go again, go again.
I hope you enjoyed the snooker sh shots there. The puncher, Callum Smith, who's got skills. Again, with the big six foot three and a half giant against little Billy Joe at five foot ten, the middleweight against the light heavy. Old school skills against new school skills. Callum being new, Billy's got old school skills. Why are we not getting that, Eddie? It's a perfect styles. We keep hearing Eddie Liar Liar Hearn talk of Callum Smith fighting at Anfield. 54,000 in the crowds, 5,000 on the fl on the ground. So 59,000 Eddie's talking, sell out at Anfield next year. Is he having a laugh? Callum Smith selling out Anfield. Callum Smith has not got the personality to carry it off. You don't see Callum Smith, right? I ain't got a problem with Callum Smith. You don't see Callum Smith flipping tables or disrespecting his opponent. And that's why I'm a fan. Because Callum Smith, right, let me tell you this. Callum Smith, you know what he does, Callum Smith? He does his talking in the ring. Callum Smith does his talking in the ring. Callum does his talking in the ring and you can't knock that. You can't knock it. You just cannot knock Callum Smith's ability to fight. He can fight for fun. He's multi-skilled. And I mean multi, multi-skilled. I'm just filing my tip down here. He's got skills to burn and you know what? I think it's an hard fight for Billy Joe Saunders and I think moving forward I think that's the biggest fight in British boxing because I don't think I don't think for one minute that Joshua against Tyson Fury will happen I don't until he's got some more miles on clock come on Rocky come on go on go on scoot scoot I don't think Joshua and Tyson Fury are going to fight at all. No, I don't think they'll fight them boys. I don't think they'll fight until Joshua's got more miles on clock. And who's to say they'll even fight again? I mean, Tyson apparently is worth 40 million now, so he's banking bare millions, isn't he, Tyson? He's making most, he's making most of his profile. And good luck to him because he would check like a mongrel, wasn't he, Tyson? When he beat Vladimir, he was treated like a mongrel. But getting back to Saunders, Eddie's talking about Anfield and 59,000 fans. They can't even sell out the Liverpool Echo Arena. So, as far as I'm concerned, uh, I just I don't see it happening. I'd like to see it happen and I'd go buy a ticket myself because me and Eddie are not exactly on talking terms, how are your email and texting terms so I'm hardly going to get a free ticket am I? so although I've only had one free ticket off Eddie for a great ticket and I've had one I've bought but I got upgraded so we got upgraded but so sporting icon saying I begged Eddie for tickets not true uh, getting back to uh, the 59,000 at Anfield it holds 54,000 so Add 5,000 on the floor, do they get 5,000 on the ground? I'm not sure, but they'd be lucky to do 15,000 in my opinion. It's my opinion I'm entitled to it. As somebody WhatsApp texted me the other day, a Fury fan. How are you doing, mate? Hope you're well. Uh, but I don't know what to make of it all. But I do know this, we remember Tony Bell, you don't we? Saying he was going to sell out Goodison. No, they didn't, did they? They did 12,000 tickets. They had to put ring into the corner. Boxing's an hard sell in Liverpool. It was a financial disaster for Eddie Earn that night. So, Eddie, jog on with your Anfield talk. But what I will say is this. Smith versus Saunders. It's a very, very, very good fight. And it's one I'd want to see. And I'd be up for it. And I'd be up for... You know what? Fights like that, I'll pay 20 quid. I'll pay 25 for that fight. I want to see it. I'd want to see it, honestly. You've got two skillful kids who can both punch. Callum can punch, he's obviously got a bigger punch, he's a bigger man, but Callum Smith's, in my opinion, 
for George Groves his best win. They were injured, one of them. Frotch and Banu Jack had already softened Groves up. Do you know what I'm saying? So I just think that it's a great fight and I want to see it, but Callum Smith jury's out on him. The jury's out on him and I think the jury is out on Billy Joe Saunders because we all keep saying he's elite and all that. Yeah, he is elite, but when you're doing that to David Lemieux and making out you're looking up to the sky when Lemieux's throwing kitchen sink at you and missing. I mean, he missed and killed three flies, didn't he? With punch you through. When you're doing that, you can make yourself look like you've got super skills, but is, is Alvarez really frightened of Billy Joe Saunders like Billy tells us? I don't think, I don't believe that. I don't believe that. Billy Joe Saunders, right, were calling Golovkin out five years ago. Now, is that fight going to happen? I don't know. But Smith versus Saunders is a good fight. I don't think Saunders wants to challenge though. I think Saunders, and this is going to be harsh, and you have to be very careful what you say about Billy on social media because Billy's the type of kid that will pull you, but I think Billy, right, I think he's a flat track bully. He likes the cards stacked in his favour, but as I said, styles. But as far as styles go, I would want to see it. Yes, styles make fights, and that's a great fight. But please, how much longer can Callum Smith and Billy Joe Saunders continue to fight complete nobodies? It's taking Mickey out, fans. I'm not saying John Ryder's a nobody. I mean, Eddie Hearn keeps going on about this uh, great run that he's on. But let's have it right. He's fighting John Ryder next. John Ryder is a friend of the Boxing Asylum. He had Simon Clayton in his corner. Simon Clayton, who's still on social media, but he has to hide now. He's not got much of a life because there's people who want to... There's people who want to see Simon Clayton and want to say hi. Uh, I know a couple of people would like to uh, call around and meet Simon Clayton. Uh, John Riley were foolish to have him in his team. Big fat guy like him, fatter than me even. But, do you know what I mean? He ripped everybody off, didn't he? But that's not John Ryder's fault. But John Ryder is not a world class fighter. He is he's a European level fighter. John Ryder, European level, is what he's. Is. And John Ryder, I don't even think. Has he won a British title yet, John Ryder? I think he has, hasn't he? No, has he lost one? I don't even know if he's won a British title yet. He's had a few shots at it, hasn't he? Let's have a look. No, 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 no. John Ryder's not won a British title yet. No, he's not won a British title yet, John Ryder. No, he's not. But he beat some good kids. He's, uh, he beat Jamie Cox. He's on a run of four good wins. And uh, out of them four wins, the 29 and 1, 25 and 1, 20, 15 and 0, 20 and 0 and a draw. Some good kids there. Rocky Fielding, I thought he'd beat Rocky Fielding. Uh, you're not going to get a decision in Liverpool. I thought he'd beat Rocky Fielding. And I thought he'd beat Arnfield as well. Uh, I thought he were unlucky against Nick Blackwell. But, like I said, John Ryder is fighting Callum Smith. John Ryder lost against Nick, Bra Nick Blackwell. Uh, Eubank beat Nick Blackwell. Groves beat Eubank. So, but Styles make fights. Shouldn't do all that, Ru shouldn't do all that Russ. It's wrong. I always, I'm always critical about people for doing that. But... Styles make fights. Now, as far as I'm concerned, Styles make fights, but this fight's got to happen. But like I said, John Ryder's not beat a world champion, has he? Callum Smith's beat three, but there's question marks over him. Billy Joe Saunders. Now, is the question marks over Billy Joe Saunders?
is the question marks over Billy Joe Saunders uh, wins over world champions well how many world champions has Billy Joe Saunders beat well David Lemieux was a former champion so that's one Andy Lee he had a belt Billy Joe Saunders beat him that's two Christopher Eubank Jr. Billy Joe Saunders beat him for British Commonwealth and European in a split decision. Now Eubank went on to win the IBO title. So you could count that as a world champion, couldn't you? Three. You'd, you'd say and he's and he is world level Eubank as well. So Eubank and Eubanks beat oh we beat De Gale. That's one world champion. Beat Arthur Abram, that's two. And he's beat Renald Quinlan, that's three world champions. So he's beaten three world champions. So, as far as I'm concerned, as far as I'm concerned, Callum Smith's got to uh, up his game, but I don't know. I don't know if it, I don't know if if Callum Smith Saunders is ever going to happen. I don't know, but like I've put here, uh, I would want to see it. Yes, please. But how much longer can Saunders and Billy Joe Saunders continue to fight and over this? He's taking Mickey out fans. There is no excuse whatsoever now for these two not to me as both same age both were even in team bg together back in the day these were in team gb billy this was at the terry edwards era billy joe saunders was 30 years of age right callum smith who while being number one in the box rec rankings is uh eight months younger He's eight months younger than Billy Joe. Now Callum just missed out on Olympics and Billy Joe went to Olympics. But Billy Joe Saunders went to Olympics as a kid, didn't he? He went to Olympics as a kid. Now, why they've got Eubank at number two on box right? I don't know, probably because Billy's a bit inactive. But you say it's Saunders, Smith, you'd have them with Benavitas, wouldn't you, as the top. Benavitas is my number one in this division, by the way. Uh, I know Callum gets a lot of, a lot of credit because he's got the ring belt and he's in that tournament, but when you look at the tournament that we actually beat, I mean, this is, this is how I look at it, right? Callum Smith fought Luke Blackledge for the British title. He then jumps in to a tournament he fights Eric Skogland, Holtzkern and an injured Groves and then he's the Ring Magazine daddy and he's known as the best. Now what sort of manager is Joe, is, uh, Joe Gallagher doing that? Well Callum Smith did he end it all together was it about seven million dollars altogether? Seven million dollars to be Scogland, Holtzkin and Groves and the Ring Magazine belt and Ali Trophy. So he didn't do too bad, did he? Hey? But as far as I'm concerned, Callum has got to start stepping up his game. He's got to do it. Anyway, have a look at these uh, snooker shots. Let me know what you think. I got that one right, didn't I? <laughs> That's me done. Fucking 
shot than I. Yeah.